Keeping that in mind, guys, we are getting started now with the first half here now at the grand final. So let's get to it. Kingwin versus TSM. It's a best of three, folks. We're going to start off here on Mirage. Second map will be played on Overpass. And our third map is going to be over on Cash if we need to play it, which we may need to do. So let's get to it, guys. Kingwin is on CT. TSM back over on the T side. Taking a look at the opener here, big mid play coming out from TSM. They're going to be able to do a decent amount of damage over here to Makulele. And Dupree's held back here too, that's a great grenade. Does a lot of damage to both Kerrigan as well as Dupree. Device is taking a lot here for the pistol shots too. But Zipix and Cajun are going to open things up by taking out Makulele as well as Rain. And as well, Cajun B picks up a second now. He's able to take down Scream. Fox is going to be able to eliminate Dupree. But overall here, Kingwin is falling fast. Kooten is going to be able to take out Cajun. But now we're just looking at a two versus three here. King would have definitely pulled back around, such as that device as well, leaving himself a little bit overexposed, but Wheaton now as well. He's also, as you can see here, down to just 13 HP. He's going to make the jump inside a Sniper. And now sneaking through, he's probably going to get spotted here in just a second by Kerrigan, and that is indeed going to be the case. The last player left alive will be Fox. And there you have it, TSM will take the first pistol round, and that's going to be a great start for them. Hopefully turning things back around from that previous set they played against Dignitas, where this map did not go so well for them. And looking at the buys here now for the second round, as things do begin to kick off a little bit here, taking a look, Kingwin is going to force up quite a bit now as Wheaton is going to be able to pick up. Uh, we're actually going to see Fox along with Wheaton both picking up uh, scouts for their players and Scream along with Makalele as well. Also going to go with some CZs. Rain, just going to stick with 5-7 as again, and of course has been probably the most dominant player so far. Him along with Scream so they have been making some very impressive plays, so we'll look forward to more of that in this game. And Again, he's made like 3Ks and consecutive frags coming out here with a 5-7 in previous rounds. So now we're going to see the TSM storming into the B site. They're going to get in there pretty much unscathed. Makalele, however, does have a little bit to say about this. Is he is going to be able to take out Device. Rain as well is going to find his first kill on a Kerrigan. After responding to a frag that Kerrigan claimed over him, Cajun B, though, responds right after that by taking down Rain. Now it's down to a 2 versus 3 here. Or it's two players here for King Win, three players for TSM. And they have to go for this retake. Makalele already down to 6 HP. Scream as well. As you take a look here, he's still at full HP, but unfortunately, TSM knows exactly what's going on, so they're going to fall back. Save those CZs for the next round. Scream's going to be able to take head armor with him as well. And Makalele going to take some a little bit of just normal armor. Still sitting at 92, so shouldn't have to rebuy unless he wants to pick up the head armor there, unfortunately. But again, that's a good start here for the guys on TSM. They're going to take a 2 They've lost two players, so Kingwin doing a little bit of damage. Definitely not what they wanted. You would expect probably three or more before you would call it a successful kind of eco round, even if you do lose it. But now we're going to look at here as well. The guys on TSM will just fully re-equip themselves. And as well, there's going to be a bit of sharing going around here as Dupree's going to toss out the gun for his teammate. And I'm sure Kerrigan has a gun laying around here somewhere. As for Kingwin, they're going to go on a full save this time around. Obviously, Fox, along with Scream, are still going to have CZs, which had been saved by, from the previous rounds. Of course, Hewton is just going to go with the... I believe, that's, I believe he's just going to be rolling with the standard P2K, and we'll leave Fox as well here to fix up a CZ. Rain as well here, also rolling with the P2K at the moment. So now we'll see again here exactly where the guys on TSM are going to try to play this. You can take a look here. It's definitely lining itself up just outside of the A site right now, but there's a little bit of a distraction happening. So we're outside of B, too. You can see Device is trying to distract and so far doing a great job of that. But now we're going to see again here TSM breaching over here into the A site. Three for one trade as Kerrigan Dupree and Cajun B all find their mark. Scream, the only one from the side of King when that's able to pick up a frag. And just like that, everything is down to Quinton now. As he's sitting back here at the moment just with that P2K. So won't be able to do too much. Not even going to find a frag. And now TSM so far dominant now with three rounds in the bag. And we're going to head into that first rifle round. So again, generally, we would expect to see those first three rounds after the pistol goes into the favor of TSM. It would follow suit there that the guys on Kingwin would be losing the next two rounds. They even forced bought up there a little bit too, so they are going to be looking a little bit rough heading into this one considering the limited amount of frags they've been able to pick up. Only, I believe, five frags total heading into this fourth rifle round. You're going to see it's going to be a little bit light on the nades. Quinton, Scream, and Rain all as well are not going to have head armor in their arsenal. And as well, you can see everybody's got a smoke and a flash, but beyond that, not a lot else to offer here in terms of utility grenades. So they are going to be lacking a little bit if it comes into a longer fight where they need to reapply smokes, especially if TSM makes a slow push, which, again, in their earlier set in the semifinal, we saw quite a bit of that, so I would expect to see it once more here, and, and this is really going to favor them once more, and I would probably expect them to win this round, but already some action getting started here as Dupree pushes in. He's able to take out Rain, and that's a huge take again for anybody that remembers how dominant Rain was. It's going to be a nice elimination there, as that's going to stop a lot of the pressure from coming onto him. Rain was an absolute beast at peeking against the players, and overall here, just the aim battles that he got into some, with some players, he was an absolute master of one versus ones, and knocking him out this early in the round is going to be a huge take for Kingwin. 
I don't see Cage and B pushing up with Device. They've already worked their way into the apartments. There's two players from Kenwin ready to go here. Fox along with Wheaton, both over here at the moment, on the site, ready to defend. Not actually looking towards those apartments too heavily, and for good reason there, too, as Kerrigan was on his way in. He's going to be able to take out Kerrigan, but now has to deal with this big push coming in from TSM, and Zipix, just like that, takes him out with a nice and easy shot, and unfortunately, Akalele and Scream both off the site right now. No way they're going to be able to get over there in time, kill all four remaining players from TSM, as well as defuse that bomb. So now they're going to sit back and save what they can here as well. They still have M4s, armor. Makalea has also got a flash for himself, so just take that into the next round. Is they're going to be forced to save regardless here with the loss coming into play. And if they can take two M4s into the next round, that's going to be a great take for those guys. As obviously, once more, they're going to have a little bit more to offer than just general pistols fighting against the players here from TSM. Zipix, along with Dupree, though, they're on the hunt. They know exactly, or at least they've got a pretty good feeling of where these players might be hiding, and Zipix is going to risk it. But as you can see, Makalele is ready to go here with that flash, tosses it out, but trying to juke around these players. He knows the round's over now, but he loses his teammate as Cajun B is able to take out Scream. Makalele as well trying to hide, but it's not going to happen. He's going to go down, and they lose both of those rifles there. So stuck on pistols only, and that is not going to be what they wanted to have here at all. Now taking a look again. Exactly... What Kingman's going to offer for themselves. Two CZs with Queeton and Scream both picking those up. P250 is also being brought into player by Fox along with Makalele. And Makalele is also going to be able to pick up a flash. But again, nothing else besides that. So TSM looking good for a 5-0 at this point. You'll even see two here. Kerrigan going with a Mac 10 Just to try and get a little bit of a closer encounter against these players. Get that aim punch rolling as he knows that most of them aren't going to have armor. And that aim punch with the SMG is going to be absolutely brutal. And that SMG should do a nice job of overall here getting in sight, get himself into the site as well as just overall dealing damage. We're going to see that now. Scream hiding out inside of Sandwich. He's rolling onto the site here. Kerrigan's going to be the one up in front, taking a lot of damage as he's having some trouble checking Sandwich. So Cajun B is actually going to be able to take out Screamy, but very quickly we'll see that response coming out here from the players on Kingwin. Dupree once again, though, brings it back into the favor of TSM as they also eliminate Makalele. And now it's down to Fox, Squeeton, as well as Rain. Bomb goes down with no trouble at all here for TSM, only losing Kerrigan on the way in there as he was the entry fragger in Zipix. He's going to go down there nice and easy with a nice frag kill that comes out there. And that takes down Rain. So now we're looking at Fox as well as Wheaton. Fox's device is going to be able to take out Wheaton. So now it's all Fox and Zipix knows exactly where he's hiding out here. And unfortunately, there's nowhere to run for him. So he's stuck behind the ticket booth. All Hellfire coming in onto Fox. And in fact, he gets taken down there with a headshot. Once again, coming in from Zipix. As that's going to be a 5-0 now in the favor of the guys for TSM. Really starting to rock it ahead. And we're going to see these guys placed into another buy round for themselves here too. But unfortunately, it is on very shaky ground as they are still on the CT side. And overall here, those buys are still going to be very costly. They lose this one. Once again, they're directly back onto a save. And that puts TSM at a probable 7 to nothing here. As again, these matches so far today, with the exception of the first one we had on Overpass when TSM was playing against Dignitas, these have been so, so one-sided. That other match we played on Overpass, see, like, the Overpass games have been relatively close with the exception of the first half of VP between Kingwin, but again here, Mirage has just been an absolute dominator for all four of our teams. And we're seeing that once again here in the Grand Finals too. Rain, again, pushed really far up. Kerrigan was not expecting that at all. Rain's going to be able to find that opening frag, and that's going to be a great pick. And he also takes out Dupree here as well. Screamy is actually, I think, is going to be the one that finds that frag, but... And we'll see Screamy once again taking out Zipix, and finally it's left to Device. He's going to be able to take out Screamy, thankfully, but overall, a very well-played round. Once again here from Kingwin is going to quickly eliminate the players from TSM, kind of trap them in, and now it's all on the Device at this point. Doesn't have bomb control. It's kind of stuck just outside of the ramp. Might be able to run in and get it, but Makalele, along with Wheaton, have their eyes on it and are ready to respond in the event Device tries to come up and grab this, so... In just a second, we're going to see him creeping up. He's managed to work his way up to the Tetris, and he's got the bomb here, too. And nice! He gets an untap there as he takes out Makalele, so he's into the site now. We'll see if he can play with anything, because he's going to smoke this off. Might be able to get the bomb down, but again, Kingwin, no. It's a three versus one. If they all push in at once, they can take him, but Device takes out Wheaton now before finally falling down to rain there. And Kingwin finally takes their first round here, bringing the score up to one to five. Now starting to make the comeback happen, but overall here, this is still... Even though we have seen now Kingwin finally getting themselves onto the board, even if we see things tied up now, this is still a very favorable half so far for Kingwin. Just to be, oh, apologies, it was just very, so far a very favorable half for TSM. I keep seeing the Kingwin as their sponsor there, and it confuses me. So, so far, this is a very favorable half for TSM, regardless, just because of the fact that these guys once more are sitting four rounds ahead on T side. And if they can keep even just that four round lead here, and take that into take that into the half here, that's going to be a great boost for them. As again, CTs generally have the advantage on this map. 
Kingwin's stronger side overall as well as seemed to be their CT side. So if they can score an advantage against them over here now, and Makalele going crazy here, picking up three frags just like that. Kerrigan Dupree as well as Device all falling down to his mighty op skills there. Then going back to my point there, if TSM can keep this much of a lead, it's going to be a great game against Kingwin. But I think Kingwin is getting their stuff back now. They just needed to get that full arsenal rolling. And you can already see it here. Rain pops right out there, takes out Cajun B like it's no trouble at all. Makalele picks up the 4K. And Kingwin once again, they're completely denied TSM of grabbing anything now in that seventh round. As we are going to sit in the eighth round with a score of 5-2. to two. And you can see finally the TSM economy has been shattered a little bit. Actually, not. they've still got quite a bit to buy with here, so they are going to go for another buy round. But after this is where things are probably start going to start to get a little bit rough. Thankfully, though, they had quite a large amount stacked up into their favor. So as this buy bonus, can, or as the losing bonus continues to increase with more and more round losses, they're still going to put themselves in kind of more and more okay positions here just because they're going to be able to continue buying that. And as well, they're on the T side, which means overall it's cheaper to play that. So considering that, uh, them continuously buying isn't going to be as big of a deal as saying if this was happening on the CT side. But to start things off here, Fox is actually going to be able to take out Device. Once again, that's a great start for Kingwin as that gets mollied off there as well. A little bit of a waste of a molly considering the positions at the moment here of TSM players, but still overall there's still going to be some good security. Queeton as well will take out Kerrigan. Now Rain hanging out inside of Sniper with a little bit of support from teammates here, just waiting for that smoke to expire. Dupree finally finds a one-shot though, and Cajun B as well will take out Queeton. So now we're looking at three players left here for Kingwin TSM. They've made a fantastic comeback, however, into this round, and they've evened it back down to a three versus three. But now it's all about getting themselves onto a site, which so far they don't really have. They don't really seem to have a really good way to get themselves onto a site just as of yet. And as you take a look and see here right now, Cajun B very carefully checking out for a Sniper, just waiting to see if Rain's going to jump out here and surprise him. Probably not the best person to have in the front, but hey, it ends up working out there as Cajun B. Gets that shot, Rain kind of plays directly into his scope, so that's an easy frag for him to pick up. And now we're only two players left here for Kingwin, Scream and Fox, both watching alternating sights right now. And again, that's going to be another shot coming out there for Cajun B. He's now up to three frags, and Fox is the last one left alive here, once more on the complete opposite end of the map. So probably not going to be able to do too much about this, and considering his arsenal at the moment with an op, along with a 5-7 being brought into play here too, probably just going to save that for the next round, creep around, hide out in the back alley, Maybe even head towards the CT spawn, grab any exits that he can from TSM, and once more send that into the ninth round with still TSM having about a six round lead against these players. Or apologies, not six, four round lead against these players. Saving that off though will be a pretty big deal because obviously we saw that two round win here. Not sure if the economy's been established enough here. You can see Wheaton's actually saved up quite a bit, along with Rain. So with the losing bonus coming in, they might be able to force up a little bit with maybe SMGs and just lighter rifles. We'll see when we actually get into the round, but. Them saving the op is probably going to be a pretty big precursor to them actually possibly trying to force this up a little bit. And even for the most part, it won't be forced. The only person that really can't afford his own rifle is going to be Makalele, and they can probably get a drop for him, considering that Fox was able to save. He's actually the lowest of the team, but as you'll see, it looks like they're going for the double op set. Of, I think I just saw two ops. Yeah, they actually send the op over to Makalele, and now they're going to try to set things up here. They did. They really worked some magic with this against VP, so if they can repeat this again against TSM, this is going to be their ticket to make a comeback happen. We already saw the op doing wonders for both Makalele, for, for Makalele here, so if him and Fox can team up here and just completely dominate TSM, then that's not going to leave a lot for TSM to work with. You'll see, though, that they are moving back over here towards the A site. Zipix and Dupree are going to be the first to come in, but Makalele already there, ready to go, misses his second shot. So he's going to be held back, misses the third shot, too, and he gets hit there by Cajun B with his op. Dinked a little bit as I believe it went through the boxes, but we're going to see him down at 17 HP, and he gets fully flashed, so he's forced off the site, and King would now have to rotate completely in. Great shot from Fox, though. That takes down Cajun B. Rain as well is going to be able to find Zipix. This flash coming out here could deal quite a bit of damage. As we take a look here, Rain is definitely the key player here right now. If he can take out both these offenders, and Fox is in there for the support, too. Great flashbang forces Kerrigan all the way back, and in just a second, we could technically see Scream pushing through, but there's not going to be any additional assistance coming in there. They're just going to let Kerrigan escape, basically. And now he's going to be going up against Wheaton, and again, great setup from Kerrigan. That flash is going to be perfect to get that extra frag, but unfortunately, obviously, with him pushed so far off site in a 1 versus 4, would not have been able to get back on there to stop that defuse from happening. And now, again, we're looking at another round going into the favor of Kingwin as they're slowly starting to make this comeback, get a little bit closer here. It's 3-6 to six now, there's three rounds behind. We're also going again into a full buy round for both teams at the moment here. Makalele has bought a little light on the nades for Makalele, but... Beyond that, he should still have no trouble operating with two flashes and an op for himself, too. Meanwhile, Cajun B sitting with no grenades for himself. He might not even need them, as he does have the support of Dupree. They are getting ready already to push into the apartments. 
and see if they can grab anything inside of there. Give me one second, guys. Just wanted to check on something really quickly. But now we're back into it now, and here comes Fox jumping out, finds the frag to take out Kerrigan. Dupree was also able to eliminate Rain in the meantime, too. And now we're reduced to a four versus four. Cajun B slowly trying to creep his way through apps, but so far this pressure being put up by Queeton through nades is proving to be a little bit too much, so GSM going to fall back here, still playing very carefully. Fox as well is on this site to assist too, but they've got the bomb. They still have a minute left, so plenty of time to decide where they actually want to make that push. And they've got themselves lined up for an A push. Dupree has gotten himself in a connector fairly inconsequentially. He was able to take out Rain in the process and now has control of that. But as you can see, there's not really a lot of pressure coming in from other sources. Scream is stuck underneath Palace Entry at the mo at this moment. And Makalele as well is stuck just outside of CT. He could potentially wrap around here and try to wait for Dupree to pop out and wait in the jungle. But again, there they also don't have a lot of intel as to where exactly TSM is moving from at this point too. So that might be a little bit of a dangerous move. And now we're going to see Scream takes the risk, pops out, picks up two frags on device. Dupree grabs a third on Zipix and the fourth huge play by Scream to take out Cajun B, Zipix, Dupree, and the pretty much the entire TSM roster. Not gonna get the ace, but might as well have there as he grabs four kills just like that. And Brits and puts that round into a beautiful situation for the guys on Kingwin, bringing up the 4 6 now. As you take a look at the money situation for TSM, it's been completely shattered. Tech 9s across the board here, Cage and B and Kerrigan, along with Device, all on Tech 9s at this point. Zipix and Dupree still able to pick up. Apologies, still able to pick up AKs, but still not a lot else to work with here as they're mainly on a Tech 9 armor buy with the assistance of two AKs, and they'll have to see if they can work anything with that as it looks like it's probably going to be mid to A play as the bomb is getting set up to move in outside of A ramp. Device was able to get that spot off onto Rain, and that's a big spot to take as now they know where he is. He's the big key player to keep an eye of, and as a screen though, as we just saw by that last round, and Rain, as you can see, they're already picking up three frags just like that. We want to go over over here onto his point of view as he's stuck with four health at this point, still picking up three frags though, and it's reduced down to Kerrigan now. As Kerrigan will have to work his way in through the connector, see if he can pick up anything. There's Molly to block off someone from running into his face, but he gets flashed. And now, at this moment, Rain is trying to blind spray him down. He's at 49 HP. Doesn't actually know where Rain is just as of yet. And he gets full flashed here, too. And there you go. They're going to take him out. Fox ends up doing the job as he rushes in from the connector. And King will now put things up to 5 6, just one more round away from tying it up as we enter the 12th round here. With TSM off to a really good start. But now Kingwin's starting to switch things up a little bit here. TSM got a little bit of a nod in between, but so far they're doing okay with making this comeback happen. They need to get a significant lead, though, as from what we saw again on VP, their T side was significantly weaker than their CT side, so they need to really keep that in mind here. And I would probably say, they, I would probably say, like, they absolutely need to get the 9-6, because otherwise it might get a little bit rough, in my opinion. I mean, Kingwin is a completely open book in regards to possibilities so far, as we really, they're, they're a complete wild card in regards to things that we could see from this team, as we haven't really seen them play too much here. And again, this is a great example of it. Fox just coming in there, almost picking up three op frags just like that. In fact, he does get three frags. Rain as well will pick up the last two there, coming out big for his team, and now they've tied things up. But back to my point there, because the team is such a wild card at this point, TSM doesn't know what to expect from another T side, neither do any of us. And from what we saw in VP, it was significantly weaker on their T side here, but... I mean, yeah, if they were able to bring it up to 9-6, I think there's a pretty good chance as well if they can if they can hash out some of the issues they were having with their T-side that they could potentially take this map off of TSM. As, as you've seen here, the guys on King would have plenty of surprise to throw at us here in today's match. Taking a look once again at the momentum coming out here from TSM. Once again, they are going to move Dupree through the underpass to see if he can find anything, but fortunately, Fox is very close by, so if he makes one movement, and oh, Fox almost saw that hand just in the bottom left corner of the window, but he is going to spot this incoming now from TSM, picks up one shot as he takes out Kerrigan, tosses the nade back, and now running back onto the site, giving himself a little bit more room to work with. So now we're going to see Device here too, still holding back, still waiting for that correct opportunity to execute. Zipix also is going to be able to find the kill on the screen, but Device gets caught out in the open there, unfortunately, as Makalele does some nice damage to him, bringing Device down to just 16 HP. That aim punch really hurting without the armor. And Dupree as well will be able to take out Rain, so possibly the two biggest fraggers at the moment, with the exception of Fox, as Fox has been performing very well this, this, ma this match as well, are now gone from the team, and that does hurt them quite a bit here, and opens up the wayside here for TSM, but Fox again still going big there with his op, as he's able to take out Cajun B, just as Dupree was able to take out Quinton. 
So now we're looking at a two versus three. Bomb is not even down yet here either. Makalili has been doing a great job of keeping the pressure on these players here. Takes out Zipix. Great spray from him. Finally, uh, finally, Dupree's is going to go YOLO on the bomb plant there. And it ends up working out. He's even able to get himself back inside. But Device now will fall down. Dupree pops out. He's able to take out Makalili. But it heavy consequences to himself. Fox switches over to the pistol. Takes out Dupree. He's got the five second defuse. So plenty of time to pull that off. And a great recovery once again here from Team Kingwood on that retake. They're going to put things up to 7 6. They've taken the lead against TSM. And from this point forward, it's just about getting that advantage that they need to sustain themselves on the second half. Taking a look once more at the economy side of things for the TSM players. They still have enough to go for buy. Won't be able to pick up an op for device or anyone else on these players, unfortunately, so they are going to have to go with a full rifle round here. But beyond that, it's still pretty much a full buy. Cajun along with, with uh, device are a little bit low on the nade game, but it shouldn't matter too much here as they've gotten the essentials. Smokes, frags, as well as flashbangs. Plenty to work with on entering a site, and it is once again going to be a little bit solidified, but this big push ends up coming out here, and it, it's a one-for-one -one trade in upper mid here. Scream takes out Cajun, Zipix takes out Scream. And now Rain not wanting to take a chance on that. You can notice this too from Rain. Rain was a really aggressive player in that Virtus Pro set, and it showed definitely when they had big advantages, he would be much more willing to peek out, but now that they're behind, it doesn't really seem to be the case. He's playing this much more passively and keeping his team a lot more in mind, which I think is a good thing, because as I said, his lurking oftentimes was the demise of his team, as they weren't really able to perform too well without him in team fights if he died on the lurk. But you are going to see there too, Kingman clean things up on the attempt from TSM to get themselves onto the B site, so McLeary and Reigns survived that encounter, and Reigns' preservativeness back over there in mid ends up coming in handy, as he's going to be able to again, keep this up and toss it over to Fox now for him to use, and... He still survives, and that's going to be a lot of money saved. You can see from Kingwin here, too, still sitting at about, I think he was sitting at about six, yes, 6,100, so still looking pretty good on the money game. Whereas TSM, they are struggling here at the moment. As Kingwin starts to take the lead, they've officially won the half, but again, with this being the last round here, I personally think they need the 9-6 to feel secure about their push so far, and you're going to see here, too, TSM finally switching things up, going over here towards, they've been going over here towards the B site for plenty of rounds in a row, and that's a great flash. Dupree is going to get himself right into this site here, moving in. Dupree is able to find that frag on a scream, trying to blind spray here into the smoke to see if he can pick up anything else, but nothing yet. In the meantime, Device is going to be able to take out Rain, and they get the plan on with literally no trouble at all. Fox, Sweeten, as well as Makalele are the last ones left alive. Makalele gets a nice spray off and brings Kerrigan and Zipix down to pretty low HPs, but they're slowly frank flanking around these players. <laughs> Wheaton has to hide in this corner, and he can't even do anything about that, really, as he's taken out. Cajun B, in the meantime, was also able to eliminate another player here from Kingwin, so it's all on Mac Kalele, but he's able to take down Device in a 1 versus 3 now. Has to work from alternate angles, as you can see here too. Cajun B has a scope set to him in just a second, but in comes Makalele, but it's not going to pull off too well there as Cajun B just takes him right out of play. And Kingwin, or apologies, TSM, is going to end up winning that first half there. Just barely, they're going to win it. Or, yeah, no, sorry. Completely mixed up my words. So Kingwin is actually going to win that first half, but like I said, it's just barely, it's 8-7, it's definitely could be a lot better than that, so keeping that in mind, coming up to this second half, which as we saw in the Virtus Pro games, this was definitely Kingwin's weaker half, in my opinion, over on their T side, they're gonna need to pull out some really big strength if they want to be able to take things serious, this is where they really started to struggle, not only on this map, but over on Overpass too, if they can piece it together here and fix those issues that I talked about before, then they're definitely going to be able to probably put up a pretty good fight here against TSM, but if those issues still remain here, and they're not adjusted heading on to the T side, TSM may start to run away as they switch things over to their CT. Once again, we're just waiting for everybody to ready themselves up and start the second half, and then we will get going. For those of you that are just tuning in, this is the Alienware Area 51 CSGO Cup, number two, presented by Curse and ESCA. We're currently at the Grand Finals, which is a best of three set between TSM and Kingwin. Kingwin, of course, surprising pretty much everybody here today by beating out Virtus Pro, one of the top Tier 1 teams at the moment, especially considering Kingwin's recent struggles against Tier 2 and Tier 3 teams, so really trying to prove themselves here today, and so far doing an absolutely fantastic job of doing that. Also, folks, don't forget we are going to be giving away a knife after this final is done, so be sure to stick around for that. It'll be done once the final has concluded. And I believe it's going to be... I think it's Crimson Web, a field-tested Crimson Web Karambit, I believe, we'll be giving away once this stream is done. I could be wrong on the field tested part, but I'm pretty sure it is. And that'll be done after the stream. But anyway, second half is starting now, folks, so let's get back to it. And thanks, by the way, once again to Alienware, along with Curtis, for providing those giveaways for us today. But here we go once more. Kingwin now on their T side. We'll see what they can work with here, as they are going to go for pretty much the same option that TSM went with in the first half. Pushing themselves back over onto the A site to try and take control here. 
See Capri holding up on top of the steps, and Device is actually going to be able to pick up a nice headshot there as he takes out Fox. And we've got Queen moving in from the Palace here as well. That's going to put a lot more pressure. Device trying to pick up another one, and he does do it. Scream finally gets his team onto the board, but Device again, and Dupri just cleaning up house here. Queen the last one alive, and Dupri once again takes him out. And there you have it there. TSM going to win that pistol round once more. And this is a great start for them as they immediately tie things up. And especially on their CT side, this gives them a great benchmark to work with. Considering that the map advantages that are given to the CTs on this map. From Kingwood's side, no force from them. Just going to stick it back. Ah, maybe not. Rain actually goes for the Tech Knight armor. So it looks like they are kind of a last second one. And Scream is still about a P250. But they are going to force it up a little bit. Tech Knight armor for most players. Scream still running with a P250. Makalele as well. No head armor for him. As he is going to pick up a smoke to give the team a little bit of utility. But this is probably going to be a very quick play through mid here. They take position behind, behind the stack just at the top of middle. And from this point, it's all about making that push forward here. They don't have a lot of nades to work with. There goes the flash. They're completely out of grenades now. So here they go. Wrap in this corner. It's going to be Cajun B on the defense. And as well, they're also going to just jump up into dark to try and take control of Sniper from this point. Dupree, I think they were expecting that B push, and they had rotated additional people back because of that. But thankfully, Dupree was there and ready to go. He's going to be able to take out Makalele. But at the same time, they're still working their way into this site. Fox... Sitting inside a sniper right now, it's a dangerous spot for them to control. Rain as well, finally grabs something here for the guys on Kingwood as he takes out Dupree. And beyond that here too, TSM still a little bit confused as to where the bomb is going. I think Kingwin themselves is still trying to decide, but it looks like they're pretty committed to an A push at this point. As now Cajun B starts to rotate back in as well, they'll keep Zipix on the B site for now. But everyone else is within close proximity and probably will cross the bomb carrier here too. They're smart with that though, I like that toss that comes out there from Rain. They toss the bomb down so they can get it through connector without the, with, with, it, with it being a much less risky, apologies, with it being a less riskier spot to push the bomb through. Pretty much for that reason that you see right there with Cajun B finding the easy frag on the Rain. Now we'll see though, however, it does not look like that Scream's actually going to be able to get himself into the site. And yep, there you have it, Kerrigan just jumps right up there, cleans things up with the scout, takes out Scream and... Now TSM have the lead, and as I warned about before, this was Kingwin's weaker side. They need to come ahead here. We're probably going to expect the 10-8, to 8, especially considering Kingwin just went for the force buy there, and it really didn't work out with their Tech 9 armor. So now they're going to be on a full save so that they can actually buy up when we get to the rifle round. And we'll see what they can work with from there. And the big thing here, once again, is when you look at the fact they only got one frag, they absolutely need to either get that bomb down, or they need to get some big... F they need to get a lot of kills here in order to make this round that impactful and really be able to put up a good competition well, that's an interesting strategy there from Rain, walking on top of his teammates' heads into the underpass. <laughs> but, uh, they really need to be able to take either a lot of frags this round or just get that bomb down. Otherwise, they I really don't think that they're going to be able to put up too large of a fight heading on to that, heading on to that first big rifle round. And look at the setup here coming out from both Kingwin and TSM. TSM tries to get coverage on the top of mid, but it just doesn't work out at all. And Dupree just goes full YOLO, popping out of mid. Scream getting aggressive there, wants to go for the knife, but gets punished by Device for that. And a complete wipeout happens there. Great positioning by TSM. And as we saw, the TSM taking a huge risk on just popping out in the mid blindly when they were surrounded on both sides outside of connector. But it ends up working out as they only lose one player in the process. And they get Scream's aggressive side of that too. He tried to pull out the knife, but he got punished for that deeply. Not sure why he went for that. But now we're in that first rifle round. And as I talked about before, they're going to be lacking. Uh, they still got full head armor, but the nades, they don't really have a lot of those. Two flashes for Hooten. Flash and a smoke for Scream. Uh, and you can see they've got a couple, they got a couple mollies and flashes, but it's just not enough to work for a full site take. You can already see they've used a large amount of them here on the mid site. Seen using about maybe like, I would say they've used about 40, 50% of their grenades already here just trying to get through a mid. They're not even on B yet where they want to push into. So that's going to be a big thing that they need to worry about now when they actually get to the site. But TSM once again is going to be able to open things up. Great shot from Kerrigan to take out Fox. Rain, however, finds an entry point to try and work his way through Dark into Sniper and then onto A. They're going to toss the bomb back, just being safe here once again for this exact reason that we're looking at now, which is going to be Zipix, who's trying to block this off. And you'll see there, too, that Makalele does not want to screw around with that very awkward angle to play against. He just runs right through and tries to get himself back over here onto the A site so that he can get solid control, get that bomb down, and start to play against TSM in a more awkward scenario where they're forced to go for that retake. But they're a little bit scared. They don't really have a lot of info yet as to where players are hanging out on the site. You can take a look at the positioning here right now. KGB sitting outside a T-Ramp. Device as well is about to rotate in. Uh, let's see, not going to be able to pick anything up, so that's going to be rather unfortunate. And now it falls on Cajun B's duty to try and hold on to something here as he rotates in from the ramp. Again, not going to happen. And now it's just down to Zipix and Kerrigan at this point. Nice shot from Kerrigan. Diz able to take out Scream. Won't be able to find Makalele, however, as he falls back just before that second shot comes out from Kerrigan. And now Zipix has gone down. Kerrigan, the last one alive here, misses that shot as Rain goes for the jump. Tosses the molly back to try and get a little bit more. 
pressure onto him to maybe force him out of a hiding hole, but it's not going to be happening. And now Kerrigan, Kerrigan, you're out of time, man. You got to get the heck out of there. And there he goes. He's running away. He's going to save that up. Great save again. Obviously, I don't think Kingwin's probably going to be able to find him within the time they have to actually locate him and get that fry on him, especially with him having an op too and and putting himself to a very limited amount of angles that he has to work against with him hiding over here in the back alley. But once more, as you have seen now with Kingwin taking that round, the question falls into how solid is the TSM economy going to be. And it's still looking like they're going to be able to buy. KGB's a little bit risky on it, so he's just going to stick with the FAMAS for the time being. But as you take a look at things there, too, everybody's pretty much still a full buy, with the exception of Kerrigan, who's going to go a little bit light on needs. But with the op being saved there, we would generally expect that. And he's still picking up three, so that's not a big deal. And Penguin as well. Here, Queeton actually not going for any needs, so he's going to let his teammates do most of that work as they line themselves up for a very quick A push. Split A push, I should actually correct myself. Be working their way up through the palace at the moment. But nasty surprise is waiting for them. Kerrigan says hello, takes out Wheaton. Now we're looking at Kerrigan starting the round off nice. Scoped right into Scream right now. If he makes that shot, let's see. Picks up one. Dupree is also able to take down Rain. Fails to take the second one, however. Now we're down to a four versus two here. It's a Makalele along with Fox to try and make something happen here. Device. Caught in the flames. We'll see a one-for-one -one trade there. Makalea takes out Dupree, and Kanger B as well is going to be able to take out Fox. But finally, Zipix closes out the round. Takes out Makalele, and now TSM to an 11-9 lead against Kingwin here once again. Starting to restore the balance and starting to pressure themselves a little bit closer to that 16 point. But this is a very shaky lead at best, especially when you look at the money situation here for TSM at the moment. They're not sitting with a very large sum of it. So one loss could completely toss them off here, force them onto a very awkward buy, or just force them onto a full save overall here. Kingwin, though, as you can see, they're on save at this point, winning that one round, then immediately losing it, completely shattered their economy. The only the only sort of buy besides P250s that comes out onto the board for this round is going to be Scream rolling with that flashbang. And now you're going to see Kingwin here. They're going to go for a quick mid play, not checking out Sniper, but he's able to get through. Kerrigan as well doesn't actually get full killed there as he gets hit a little bit, but Dupree is able to take out Rain. Cajun B also takes out Makalele. Just like that, we're down to two players here with Cajun B coming out big here for the rest of his team. Playing this angle up over on Cat at the moment and already picking up two frags. Dupree as well. Brought down to one HP, but still able to pick up the frag that's needed. Kerrigan finally going to get eliminated here as well as there is a movement from Fox to get some frags finally here. Trying to take out Cajun B, but it's not going to happen. And now TSM are up 12 to 9. As we take a look at what Kingwin has heading into this next round, we'll see exactly what they are able to pick up from the buy perspective. And Looks like, again, they could force it if they want to. We'll see, though. AKs are coming out. Yeah, they are going to force this up a little bit. You can see a couple of Galils here, specifically on Quentin as well as Rain. AKs for Makalele and Scream as well, and then Fox will also take an op into his hands. So they are going to go all in on this one, but once more, if they lose it, they're probably back on saves, as they won't really have the money to contest if they're buying out this heavily. The total, the total net worth of money here still for Kingwin after all these buys is going to only be about $300, I believe, so... This is a big risk they're taking here, and they absolutely have to perform this round, otherwise things get ugly very quickly. And as you can see already, Fox gets hit with a great place nade there that comes out, I believe, from Zipix. It's going to execute exactly where it needs to. Kerrigan once again opens up the round for TSM by taking out Scream. And now he's just going to push inside of the sniper, getting ready. He knows that this play inside of Dark has been a very popular choice for Kingwin in their attempts to aggress in here, so he's going to position himself just to where he can counter that out if that does become the plan. Not really going to be happening, though, as Rain just works his way into Connector here after jumping out of mid. Another failed attempt to take out the sniper from TSM, and Device as well will also find his mark on a Makalele to take him down. So now we're looking at so far a perfect round for TSM. They still have to deal with the pressure that's eventually going to come into this site here from the rest of the guys on Kingwin. And a great shot coming out there. That takes out Zipix. Cajun B, he's got to perform now. He is able to take out Wheaton as well as Fox. Just like that. Brings it back into the favor for his team. And now everything is on rain at this point. He's working his way outside of Sniper. He's able to take out Kerrigan. But now we're down to both Dupree as well as Cajun B. Cajun B sitting at 5 HP. Dupree as well still at full. This is not a completely lost round, just as of yet for, for Rain and the rest of Kingwin as they pulled off some very impressive feats before. He's only got 20 seconds to make this happen, though. And he's not actually confident in this, just as of yet. Still leading Fragger for the team, but he noticed this op back here, so he's actually going to opt to save that. Pull back over here into the CT spawn and just try and take that into the next round. And see, once again, exactly if they're going to be able to work with that op. And take a look again at the economy. As I said, this is the big risk being taken by bringing that into play and... They are, I believe, just as of this round now. It might be the next round too. They were, they might be on full losing. They're gonna be on full losing bonus here pretty shortly. But as you're taking a look at the money situation, that op is basically gonna be all they will have here for this round. As again, they are really starting to fall behind. And if they don't start to 
put some rounds onto the board for TS for apologies for themselves here within the next one to two rounds. It's basically going to be all over at this point in. TSM's just gonna start to run away with things. And the even bigger risk at this point to discuss too is the fact that if Kingwin does still get a round, they've gotta keep it consistent. They can't afford at this point to drop other rounds. It has to be absolutely perfect from this point, and this is a very huge round for them. Because after this, they're gonna get one more buy attempt, and it, like I said, they can still technically make a mistake one more time if they end up losing two more rounds, but as you're gonna see, it's not working out at all here. Makalele is able to take out Device, and it's all brought down to him at this point. He's got an M4, but again, TSM just cleans up house, basically. Dupree and Cage overtook a little bit of damage, and Device fell, but at the end of the day, now you take a look at the money situation here for TSM. They're just rolling in the dough at this point. There's a couple guys were sitting at just about 9k before the round even started, and Kerrigan, even after buys now, sitting at 6.2k for himself. Dupree as well, sitting at 7.4. So even if we see Kingwin take one to two rounds here, TSM is still going to be in a pretty decent position to continue buying. Now, like I said, this is basically it here for King. When they lose this one, it's all over. Is they're gonna be forced to save once again. And it looks like here that TSM might even get a little bit aggressive. It's mainly fruitless, as I don't believe Wheaton will actually push into ramp. That'll be a very bold move. He's done it. He actually was doing this kind of back over on, on overpass. He was the one that pushed in from tracks into uh, apologies from tracks over into. Wow, sorry, I had a. Uh, Lost my train of thought there for a second, folks, but he actually, he, he pushed back over there into uh, Canals last time, and unfortunately, he's going to try to do the same thing, but back onto the A site here, and it's not going to work out at all, but I like what Kingwin is doing here. This is actually a pretty interesting strategy. You can note that, again, they've managed to push through, and they got that opening peak and actual kill on the Queen, so for the most part, you would think, you would think that TSM would think that, okay, it's clear, now we can rotate to B, but that's not going to be the case at all, and now as you see here, TSM's got to react pretty quickly to this kind of fake fake that's coming in here from Kingwin as they go for the fake, and once that player's dead, now they push him with the rest of their roster. Big surprise is coming out here from Cajun B, as he's able to take out Rain. We're finally falling down there. It's actually going to be Dupree is the one that was sitting behind, but again, Scream just tap, tap, taps on a Cajun B to take him down. Zipix as well is going to be able to find another frag, and now it's Zipix versus Makalele. Makalele hiding out inside a firebox right now, but kind of blindly, ru blindly runs out in the hopes that Zipix was flashed and that Makalele would have been given enough time to get that plan off, but it's not going to be happening. And now, once more here, TSM sitting at 15 to 9. It looks like it's a safe call at this point to say that they're going to be taking this map against Kingwin, and that puts them in the great spot now as we head over onto Overpass. For them to maybe solidify things here too, as that overpass map was a lot closer when we take a look at Kingwin's last performance on that one. And Kingwin was a lot more dominant versus Dignitas on overpass than they were, obviously, on Mirage in that other semifinal too. So all prospects right now are looking very good for the guys on TSM in order to close out this set and take it into their favor. But it's not over just yet, folks. Capri's going to open things up as we'll see Kingwin basically going for an all-in push over here onto the A site. Trades coming out all over the place. As we're going to see Rain here as well, trying to find a frag, but it cannot happen. And now Scream, the last one alive, he's going to fall. And that's going to end the first map of this set, folks. Congratulations to TSM. They're now going to be 1-0 in this set and only 